Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in the roundtable dedicated to infrastructure and construction industry, hosted by Michael Page. As most of you would be already knowing it, me, I am Parul Chandra, senior consultant at Michael Page, recruiting in building material construction and infrastructure as a space. Quickly, uh, let me give you an understanding of the topic. We have all been talking about the new normalcy post COVID in general, but let's face the reality that our industry dynamics levers are very different from any other industry. And that's where connecting with the CXOs, we figured out that there were two main concerns that came out. One, business continuity in this environment. And second, keeping people at the center of the business. And that's where we thought to get business leaders from different walks of life well within the industry to share their perspective on navigating through this time, keeping business and people in focus. Therefore, allow me to introduce our illustrious panelists here. Let me share my screen to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Sanjay Kalra. Sanjay is the CEO. Is everyone able to see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Sanjay is the CEO for Bath Product Styles Business, which is the building material division of Birloka Hindware. He's an industry stalwart with a career of 33 plus years, spanning across Makio companies like Pidalite, Sumani, JK Cement. And this is his second stint with Hindware where he has seen it all in the industry, right from skyrocketing growths to depression, setting up companies from scratch to running one of the oldest brands successfully in building material and construction industry in where. Welcome on board, Sanjay. Next, we have is Saurabh. Saurabh is the president for Havel's business. He is in fact handling one of the largest and the most profitable businesses at Havels. He is also on the executive council of the group company. And in the last three plus years, he has committed a growth of 25 plus percent CAGR to the company, making Havels a household name what we know today. He brings a very different flavor to our industry. Coming from Airtel with 13 years of experience across setting up different businesses from scratch, Still becoming the CEO of one of the most profitable and largest circles at Airtel. He is also from IIT Kanpur and I am Ahmedabad Pass Out. Delighted to have you on board with us, Saurabh, today. Next on our esteemed panel is Rohit Tokla, Sales Director for India Business for one of the largest company globally in paints, Adson Nobel. For the last 11 plus years with Adson Nobel, Rohit has literally seen it all rising up the corporate ladder internally from sales to marketing to operations, having a cross-functional exposure across industries with a rewarding tenure of working as a general manager at Coca-Cola. Again, someone whose vast cross-industry experience has added to the growth story of Axinobel in India today. Welcome on board, Rohit. Next, we have to bring the people perspective, one of the most recorded influential HR leaders, Manvi Sushi. Manvi is the director HR for South Asia for labels and graphics business with Avery Dennison. She was previously the HR director for South Asian countries with Asa Bloy, managing a 1400 plus diverse people background over dispersed location. She is someone who has sailed companies with talent and people in dynamic environments of mergers and acquisitions, integration, enabling people agenda and business together. She is also a pass out from MDI. Welcome on board Manvi. I think no one better than you to talk about unprecedented business situations again in India. Before we deep dive down into starting the topics, Sophia, why don't we get a sense check from our audience? What does they feel about the industry right now? Hello, Parul. So we've got the poll on the screen right now. 
Question is, what's your take on the revival of this industry in this financial year? So feel free to cast your vote right now and we'll be able to share the results with everyone on the call. We also have the first um, Q&A question come through from Pawandeep. Thank you for that. The rest of you who already have uh, questions in mind, please feel free to pop that into the Q&A bo a box anytime. I'll let the poll run for about five more seconds. Those of you who have not voted, please feel free to do so now. The results are actually quite interesting. So I to share that with all of you. I will close the poll now in the interest of time. Here you go, Parol. What do you think? I think that's a very, very interesting observation panelist and sets a very, very uh, good tone to pick up the first topic that we have. Which is challenges in restarting and adapting from an operational and logistics point of view. Given that panelist, we see that close to a majority of our audience is either optimistic or on a wait and watch movement. Sanjay, if you can just give us an understanding how and what have been the challenges in restarting business since businesses have been back on feet for the last 30 plus days. Hi, good evening everybody. Nice to be here. I think a challenge, if you see, first of all, we are in very, very unpredictable times. Unsure of things, when things we wait, we wait for post lockdown one, two, three, and then we see, okay, there will not be any other lockdown. <laughs> then we come up with a lockdown. That's one thing. And if manufacturing we talk about specifically, we have obviously inventories piled up. You know, other side, uh, the demand is low. And uh, restart is tough. Restart is tough from two points of view. First of all, uh, how do we predict our demand forecast? Second, how do we, uh, th there is a challenge on the people front, you know, blue collar uh, staff, uh, there is uh, because of the migration, there are a lot of people going. Now, manufacturing is not that uh, adversely impacted because most of the people, uh, blue collar job is on a permanent basis and they are residing in the vicinities only. But if you talk about the sites from where we are, you know, all the consumption has to happen. I think, uh, again, very, very unpredictable time. And uh, so, but I hope that now things have last 10 days, things have picked up and uh, slow movement has started. As in the beginning, I was saying, ki we are improving day by day. And we are monitoring also similar way that how do we improve? Do we improve yesterday uh, on yesterday's sale or yesterday collection or, you know, how the markets are opening? We are taking view of entire uh, market because currently, if you look at, uh, you know, if you put it on a, uh, you know, in one piece, it is around 50% markets are only open. So it's pretty challenging. It's yeah. uh, from uh, one from the, you know, uh, manufacturing point of view that uh, we have not been able to start the production as yet due to inventory. Second, the consumption because of the sites not starting and we, you know, building material is. I think uh, it will not be on the first priority list sure, you know, of sure. anybody, you know, only very, very urgent work or repairs will start first. I think that's the scenario currently. I think, thank you so much, Sanjay, for your point of view. Saurabh, if you can help us understand, and there's a very interesting question that uh, Pratyush has asked us, which anyways, I was going to ask you because we have been reading a lot about migrant labor issue. How real is the challenge? specific to our industry, what's the ground reality for blue collar and migrant staff for our industry? Thank you, Parul. Thank you for having me on the panel and uh, good evening to all the attendees. It's really nice to talk to people specific of your industry because, you know, our problems are so specific. And as Sanjay rightly put in, it's not the priority industry. So, uh, Parul, if I can take a second to, you know, kind of uh, understand when the lockdown happened what was the situation at that point in time what really happened was lockdown was announced almost instantaneously right i'm not or almost immediately right. so the labor force uh, was you know kind of reconcile uh, reconciling with what would happen next right they had so much to process you know on one hand this entire you know 
they are call it mahamari right this mahamari this epidemic this pandemic they had no clue about this we you know are probably more fortunate to read or i would say unfortunate to read a lot of media and get uh, the stuff right but these people had clue in terms of you know this pandemic only through people who were telling them and most of more often than not it's the contractor who gets us this labor etc he's guiding them so they had no clue. they were worried about themselves their families what would happen to their families and very very important at this point in time they were worried about whether they would have a job the next day or not because all of a sudden a lockdown was announced which most of the people had never seen so the first thing that havel did and you know many companies did in that uh, kind of a scenario was give them an assurance that you take care of what you must at this point in time because even we don't know what's going to happen right sure. we will take care of whatever you know kind of financials etc that you have you you know just take care of whether you have to go home or you have to stay or you have to work out where will you stay or your rations etc for the next 15 days because if you remember it was for 15 days at that point in time and nobody had any clue that it it's going to last for 50 whole days so we gave them the assurance and that's what brings me back to the question that you asked that when they came back right we you know kind of gave them the salary for entire 50 days and lot of my sector you know industry uh, co industrialists did the same which created a confidence in them that saying that okay and confidence and connect because these are simple people you need to understand that they are not you know really savvy in terms of calculating mujhe kitna mil raha hai kya hai all that kind of stuff goes at the back end right they came back and you know as sanjay said we are looking at the books every day but uh, you know since we have almost about uh, uh, 13 factories spread across north and east india we are back to about 50% to about 80% production as of normal times and let me tell you the constraint is not about uh, manpower it's more to do with more supply chain issues etc but manpower is right Yeah, thank you so so much, Sora, for your opinion. Uh, I think we are having a lot of questions around the same topic. Thank you so much, audience, for your support there, and we will take up those questions in bits and pieces. So, Rohit, next, asking you is: Has there been any learning from a supply chain logistics, right? Like Sora mentioned, is there any takeaway once we are picking up the business? Have we learned something from this? uh thanks parul for having me on the uh panel and good evening everyone uh let me start uh with just taking on from what sanjay and saurabh has said uh one side is a manufacturing uh second side is on the customer front which is on the site front right uh if you see entire construction industry close to 83% of the labor is casual labor right so that is uh, one portion which is and even before the lockdown uh, with the kind of inventories which were there in the market uh, things were just coming up back from last three months construction industry was showing some positive trend yeah so clearly the casual labor and its impact on the consumption really needs to understand on the labor front right uh definitely the care is one thing during the crisis because crisis is what which is dramatic and and creates a larger impact right so sure. that is one thing which is a, a big learning clearly the learning from this was a cash preservance because if you want to play a big brother role like right, you require to have something which you can take care of uh everybody uh be it let's say in our case taking care of painters who will finally apply on the wall or or the retailers right because they will also their cash cycles will also get disrupted uh, because sense. and at the same time the vendors right uh, sure. there are a lot of msme vendors who are dependent on what you uh, because they looked at you as a big brother correct so it it's an entire chain and as a result uh, clearly clearly that makes a uh, cash is where the cash uh, discipline makes huge uh, impact and that's one of the big learning second learning uh, the way uh, saurabh said manufacturing is one because there the labors were guaranteed about that yeah they have a future income uh, more is a challenge with the supply chain 
uh, thanks to government of india first time i, I have seen at least uh, now that if government decides be it state government or the go- central government or a district level government the law enforcement can be really really good yeah and which though the law enforcement was for a good cause but it created huge amount of supply chain issues like uh, if you realize close to 50% of the drivers you know the freight drivers comes from just 14 districts in india and if you put in a a, a restriction on movement of that it will hamper the entire chain so uh, clearly the challenges and plus there were multiple guidelines which were coming in really to understand the local level third thing was adherence to safety protocol one is health infrastructure second is to do with the safety protocols right where how will you make sure that uh, people are working properly right with the proper safety protocols otherwise uh, when the things open up you will be closed others will be working yeah so uh, critical to see that not only you but others and including your suppliers they also follow the safety protocols because if something gets wrong there your entire chain gets disturbed so sure. it was clear clear managing and last point which was making us an entire supply chain agile because you never know one area which is right now not in a containment zone tomorrow it can be a containment containment zone right so the proper uh, networking the networking of your entire supply chain has to be agile enough so that supplies can be managed dynamically on a everyday basis uh, correct so uh, that is there and second which is very very important is during this time is a cost of managing this correct because uh, finally it should not happen that you don't make anything for the company to survive in future so these sure. are our uh, key learnings uh, during these times so sure. thank you so much rohit uh, for your inputs there manvi picking up your brains from a people perspective from a labor crisis handling situation what have been the key challenges and how hr team talent management team people team has been able to handle that yeah uh, thanks for uh, that question and i think the context Next of the demand and supply situation of labor has been well set by my co-panelists. So of course that piece is one critical area where the business always looks for support to HR, whether it is the white-collared staff or it is the blue-collared mm-hmm. factory workers or it is even gig workers who come in on flexible basis to the organization. Now, if I have to just put it in context, we've seen some very interesting. changes with these three categories right so with the white collar we've seen uh, of course more flexibility and and flexible work arrangements stepping in uh, and through the period of the lockdown 1.02.03.0 3.0 uh, the virtual aspect of technology being the hinge pin to collect all of us whether it's business reviews or it is keeping connected to our sales teams keeping connected to our customers keeping connected to uh the msmes which are much in the media today uh who are also facing similar issues with labor and and the supply chain so so um so so we've had a very interesting experience with the productivity of the white collar staff actually going up and you know, so that's our category a workers and and employees and the second category is of course the blue collar wherein um you know with every denison being uh, being exempted uh, as an as an essential good supply chain we were working right from day one of the lockdown right and we manufacture labels which go into all kinds of uh, you know your sanitizers disinfectants food and beverages so we were an exempted part of the supply chain and uh, right from day one of the lockdown we had to ensure that the blue collar which became an essential skill for us uh de facto stayed motivated right and of course with ex gracias with an interesting uh special pandemic leave that we announced for people who still wanted to stay at home um and uh, and to ensure their movement from their home to the workplace seamlessly and ensuring safety at the heart of every decision becoming super important 
and then to enable that safety decisions that we took in the form of a playbook to also help our value chain which is our customers and supply chain because slowly as the entire packaging industry became exempted the entire value chain started opening up and we still see that trend today and i realized that those early experiences with blue collar are helping the entire industry now but of course there is like sanjay had shared earlier uh, a shortage in in terms of demand itself so we are seeing demand as you know an end consumer challenge and that ripple effect in that entire value chain to us now uh, an an interesting question would be to ask uh, how does the industry unravel as such whether it is construction or it's building material or it's you know our uh, industry which also has products getting into infrastructure and building material like graphic solutions etc and as the industry starts growing we would of course be keen to understand with the current labor that we have with which we are seeing some amount of production happening and the demand being met is that sufficient to meet the needs right and so far what we see is when our casual labor goes we're able to recruit and they're happy to work for us because they see a lot of pay coming on time they see yeah. safety aspects they're you know they're um, sort of proud when they go back home but but the question to ask is is that sufficient and the third piece with the gig workers is really interesting what we see is the demand for gig workers going really up because uh with the demand situation being under question each and every company being a bit uh conservative in going for full time hires uh how can we use flexible workers more effectively right so so a, a lot of dynamic happening in the talent market uh with this the work from home policy coming under uh you know uh, a sure. revamp leave management policies coming under revamp sure. uh sure. engagement programs going to the next level uh with mm-hmm. virtual aspects to it uh and making sure that our high pots especially ones identified as high potentials in the talent that's, management spectrum that's very uh, critical market i think we will touch upon the white staff the high pods as well going forward uh this gives us a sense overall that the situation is not that grave or critical and with the big players or the big brothers at zohit rightly mentioned it has been handled with lot of uh sentiments and lot of care that has been given to the bottom of the pyramid for all the businesses at least in the formal player so very very satisfying to know that from the business leaders moving on to our next topic sofia um let's understand from our audience how the communication with them has been managed so far internal organization communication i think yes. we have a 30 second window yeah so the question is how satisfied are you with the communication from your organization during this crisis you can choose from very satisfied somewhat satisfied neutral or slightly disappointing Let's give it a while more. All right, I will close in about 5 seconds for those of you who have not voted yet. Please pass your vote right now. Okay, let's we'll stop it now. Thank you for those of you who participated and here are the results. That's that result to see again panelists that most of the companies have handled the crisis and the communication really well close to 72% say very satisfied and very very little percent of people are saying either neutral or slightly disappointing again a very strong indicator of how our economy is which takes us to our next topic let me again share my screen to present to my audience our next topic that we are discussing which is evolving communication with stakeholders both internal and external starting with the external stakeholders sanjay if you can help us understand how external communication with vendors customers dealers specifiers influencers is being managed by the industry Sanjay can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Yeah. 
so as a human i think we have a knack of adopting you know situation pretty fast and i see that's what what we have done in last uh, 60 days if you look at and uh, i personally if you say i i would not have met so many people you know in these 60 days whether it was one to one or one to many you know we had uh, everything on the plate we learned a lot new things so i think that that what went uh, with uh, things were moving and besides that they were i think uh, all companies <clears throat> for the employees as well as as well as uh, you know external stakeholder was very very preemptive you know i think i would have sent out at least <clears throat> sorry five to seven communication to the channel partners to distributors at a different level and well uh, you know articulated uh, communications taking care of all the aspects what were going on you know environment how the situation is what is the move forward similarly there were communication specifically on the product fronts there has been uh, you know i think uh, we held one of the uh, you know large number of dealer conferences we can say and uh, on a lighter note uh, zero expense otherwise uh, one dealer conference per dealer cost us 5000 rupees minimum so uh, that was one and other than that uh, you know all verticals were very very uh, you know energetic to come forward and take trainings you know of dealer staff dealers share the new uh, you know new products even existing products which were not so well known similar way things kept on moving for the referrals also even to that extent we even went ahead and connected with the plumber community also which is quite important for our business and through again through webinar you know through again only this forum so i think there was a clear cut uh, you know uh, way forward through one written communication mails going through whatsapp and then uh, zoom i think that was the best tool what we got during this period and uh, i think still on now you know i can tell you we were going little slow on uh, you know uh, in a portal it was it was not moving forward but then when we got into situation immediately we took time and the dealer portal was you know uh, kind of uh, fast paced and today we have more than 700 uh, you know channel partners out of say 1400 which are downloading their account statements or their details or their credit notes through the dealer portal so we made interactive uh, platforms also and uh, now i think there's a scope for launching product you know uh, you can get 4 500 dealers of yours and virtual do a virtual launching you can have be a physical you can show the product physically attributes or you can make a presentation so i think this has been evolving and none of the organization has left uh, any kind of any scope to leave out whether it was vendor we had vendor meetings whether customer dealers influencer influencer again multiple influencer i think we touch base everybody so communication you saw 72% you know sure, communication sure. coming from you know that's how i think things were and that's how i think most of the companies are doing it understand sanjay thank you so much i think uh, most of the companies have already moved to that format uh but as rightly asked by jyoti and pratyush again uh they are both asking and a majority of us are asking do for uh, when this is to you do we have gone digital but our industry is very relationship driven right it is a lot of leg work in the market lot of touch and feel product will the impact be the same will we continue to do business like what we are doing it today saving costs and still thinking that we are maintaining the same productivity or efficiency what's your take Well, Jee, before I uh, answer that, let me you know kind of take pleasure out of the fact that your question did give seventy two percent. So some of the you know industry leaders like us should would be doing something right. And you know I saw one of the questions where somebody was com- uh, you know complimenting Hindwear and uh, Sanjay Hems for the communication that happened. So you know we can you know in a way pat our backs for that. Uh, in terms of you know another element that I would like to touch. Uh, Uh, Sanjay touched upon the external element. I would like to touch about the internal employee element as well, because as you rightly said, a lot of our sales guys we have a twenty five hundred sales force who go out, you know, talk to the dealers. Communication, physicality of the whole thing is so important. So all of a sudden, you tell them, "Hey guys, from tomorrow, you are not going to do anything. You are going to stay home." You know, it's a huge mental trauma. 
we realized that and almost immediately you know we got into action and there is a tool that we have uh, and allow me to mention it in a closed forum like this and ms tools is a tools that we uh, use and we all had that in our uh, system and all but it was lying you know kind of as uh, you know is when we don't use such things it is there but we don't uh, see the importance almost instantaneously within 3 days almost the entire 5000 6000 employees were up and running on microsoft tools there was a very senior level gentleman who organized and created a calendar out of you know the training programs both on the product trainings as you know we are spread across 20 different verticals there were training programs in each of the verticals and you know then we went ahead and did some soft skills training program not only that we created a youtube channels and havels uh, you know is is a very good uh, you know this thing on uh, uh, singing and with our chairman also you know interested in that we created a youtube channel for havels where employees could uh, you know post their uh, uh, you know songs and stuff and get so a lot of internal engagement happened and as a result 10000 man hours of training and that would made i make manvi happy because you know training is something that really you know takes a back seat when you know the normal hum and drum of uh, things happen as a result what happened is we extended this to our channel partners also and coming to your question in terms of whether our channel partners accepted this of course they did because this these are you know just understand these are surreal circumstances nobody wants the physicality even if you go today even when the markets are open in kerala and in uh, bangalore and stuff people are saying please connect us on phone connect with us on phone and don't come as a result even when we are about 40% of our business uh, you know uh, uh, back to normal almost 100% of our uh, orders have come on the system almost 50 to 60% of our you know uh, contacts with the dealers have been on the system or through you know uh, uh, digital means of communication so when pressure is put or when the circumstances change what i have realized is it's a misnomer to say that people don't learn they want to we allow them to function in that kind of an atmosphere and hence they do that when all options are taken away they are really really fast learners and necessity really teaches you and they go all out and adapt to technology very very fast i think that's that's rightly put it that once put in a situation or a fix we learn to adapt i think uh um, so picking up from there um i have a question for rohit i think a lot of people have already asked this question it is difficult when the sales team specifically is not going to market rohit how to manage the morales of the sales team though given the situation the dealers will function you will get some orders but what are you doing to manage the morales of employees and specifically sales team so let me uh start with uh you know the way exonoble we handled uh, the things first was addressing the fear right people have fears of all sorts in their mind so it's much better yeah you showed 72% of the people are very satisfied uh, clearly addressing a fear that my job will be there is company will going to downsize if my salary is going to cut and we uh, decided to take all these questions head on second was uh, clearly managing an environment a uh, managing an environment means what giving a right facts in a transparent way to the people right so everybody understands that these are the challenges and what are our typical responses to this challenge and everybody understands their role in those challenges so sure. right so that is where we involved everybody uh and 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 made sure that uh they understand the internal challenges as well as external challenges which company will go through and the resources available to find those challenges and which built a clear cut bonding a lot of engagement activities which we started to do that uh which is some were short term some were long term short term like a uh, mental health because this was the time so clearly uh, we have something called as a visit app where doctors are available and people can go and speak about their current mental conditions and all right and and talk mm-hmm. about and and take a medic second thing which we did uh, really really good is a 
uh, physical health. So what all of us have done is that we contributed uh, money, we kept it, made it a kitty, and we said whoever loses weight or whoever comes out the strongest during this lockdown, <laughs> yeah, and and we awarded. So that was a, a, another bonding. So multiple such exercises like. who does more push ups and and baking up uh, dishes in the evening so multiple things kept on happening and and people were involved last which is again to do with the skills right uh skills uh is what we have a platform called as percipio which is an e learning tool sure. thousands of areas where uh people can learn and develop themselves right of their interest and the company interest plus on those we have lot of e learning platforms and where people were continuously getting engaged and learning and earning badges right so everybody was showing that i have earned 10 badges 12 badges and similarly on the places of work where the skills were required for a job what we uh, did is uh, we started testing their understanding on whatever capability with their build and clearly people started comparing their schools that i know better than you or you know so a lot of competition and and things were there second thing which was for our top talent which was for a long term exercise right uh sure. where you do various scenario planning right uh on how when the market will open what will be the reaction by different player correct it's just sure, not sure. because there are two things one is near and now right and second is little longer horizon sure yeah and where if the top talent gets involved there they really start understanding a bigger picture right they start contributing and as a result a huge amount of engagement so we what we did is we started something called as war game right so different right. people have become a different companies which they see really typically in the market and and started uh playing as a employee of that company so clearly sure. the reaction was like today i am this and i will behave like this sure yeah. i think rohit will expand on that further uh in our next topic i think it would have been a very difficult task for you to assess whose recipe is the best or whose push ups are the most for 1000 plus people throughout the day but yes that's a very good way of you know keeping the competitive spirit up if not in revenue top line numbers orders perfect i think manvi uh, picking the cue from there understanding the 72 percent people have said it has been managed very effectively is a job definitely well done help us understand from a people perspective how difficult does it get to manage employee sentiment and still communicate that business comes first question for us but before i answer that i have a question for rohit uh, rohit how much money did you win that's a very valid question uh, yeah results are still awaited <laughs> i'm participating and i'm participating very very actively <laughs> great great please let me know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so a great question parul uh, i think it's always a, a tight rope to walk uh managing sentiments and making sure that the actions as per business needs are being communicated in a transparent and an authentic way right and i think each business leader go has gone through this dilemma and i'm sure saurav rohit and sanjay would echo uh what i'm saying so when you planned your scenarios along with your hr teams and worked with the copcom teams to communicate it there's always been a lot of words smithing a lot of uh you know uh, debate on which word to use and i think at the end of the day the call that each good leader has taken is trumping the trumping of authenticity and i think this is something that uh, is reflective of the poll result that you've got when people are saying great job because i think all good leaders have trusted the maturity level of the organization and even if they have reasons to believe that their managers and employees have not demonstrated that maturity in past they have formed it out of them and they have built it through very careful coaching and a uh, very close conversations to the extent that i have seen uh, you know our leaders in across the board you know you know we have a virtual boardroom these days you know prioritizing those one on one connects and calls over 
uh, reviews, right? Because it is in that one-on-one -on -one connect that you get the opportunity to build that maturity in the organization. And I think the results have been fabulous because it has led to the entire organization coming together to co-create a solution, whether it's an emergency response kind of a solution or it is a more long-term scenario planning and truly collaborate. Uh, we have seen actually a boundaryless organization over the last few months wherein I have never been so involved in operations as ever before or the numbers as ever before and I'm sure the business leaders feel the same way about HR. I think for a few months we forgot where our boundaries started and where our job descriptions ended. And another interesting thing that uh, we've realized from a communication to stakeholders perspective is that involvement of these stakeholders in the decision making itself has helped us because what we did was we went uh, and did a very interesting way of uh, you know these resource groups in which at every site level uh, and up till you know the escalating principle of a management level, level we had cross functional response teams right and those response teams were of two natures one dealing with the current situation and the other is more like a task force from either a cost out standpoint or a revenue generation or a you know mark, demand protect projection standpoint and those were very interesting insights because it was not just the plant operations team working on your total manufacturing cost it was also your finance nah, hr yeah. and other people entering and similarly uh, in demand projection you know your snop kind of teams who sure. who who build in those numbers from those demands, talking about past trends and giving them and that information. Beauty to the business. Absolutely. And so I think it was not just the formal communication channels that led to the messaging being passed straightforward. It was also the buzz that was created in the I task force. We have lost you. Yeah. Yes, I'm just saying okay. that it was not just the formal communication, but also the task forces that played a really important role for people to arrive at the same conclusion as the organization was. I hope you're able to get Perfect. me in my connection. Yes, we were able to get you. That takes us to our last topic. Uh, looking at a more wider and a futuristic view, I'll share my screen to have our audience seeing the last topic of the day, which is re-engineering workforce and business. All right. Now, Help us understand, Saurabh, we'll start with you first. When we say re-engineering and workforce, can you see my slide? Audience? Yes, yes. Yes, perfect. Saurabh, uh, my question will be to you first. A lot of people have been asking this, that we have rejigged a lot of things in our supply chain, logistics, and is it what all levers have been pulled and you know the digitalization is it going to stay for, with us well uh, let me answer it in uh, two manners digitalization in terms of communication yes there is no way out i am very very sure that it's going to stay uh, and as the things that i mentioned earlier uh, in the kind of you know, people who are considered traditionalists, they would pick up a phone or, or at a hat's drop, go to the person, visit it. Every physicality has been challenged and everybody is comfortable using, uh, you know, this means. Even to the extent that my office is in Noida and these days, uh, you know, some of the Noida folks have started going home and I'm itching to go to the office. But the constant fear that I have in my mind is my productivity and my efficiency would drop with a, you know, two hour or a one and a half hour commute, uh, you know, in, in, in total. So digitization and, uh, uh, you know, communication is going to stay. Second thing is about using digitization and smart in the way we work in our products or in our way and methods of selling so online is again a different kind of a trend so you know I, what i mean to say is a coexistence of trade and online so in uh, havels we are working on a very good concept or very unique concept of you know maybe people know on this panel that uh, uh, havels is a very uh, you know kind of trade centric and um, uh, you know a uh, channel partner centric company so what we've really done is that we will fit, we will put all efforts on online. We will get orders over online, but the fulfillment 
is going to be done through offline so it's called an o2o model you know if people want to hear jargons it's an o2o model with online and an offline and we also have a lot of our franchisee stores almost about 520 franchisee stores across the country so this is another way in which digitization is going to stay and if i can slip in a third one which was going to be very important for the you know uh, people who are attending this panel is using digitization and somebody actually asked the question uh, is using digitization in supply chain within and and thanks for us having invested in supply chain you know as a last minute kind of resort and on, on it within 72 hours of the lockdown we were clear in terms of what all material was lying where which places and we were even able to get a lot of places to you know kind of get temporary go downs etc so that our trucks could be unloaded and you know we could get a fix on the material so i would say that this is a right time to look at digitization from all the three lenses sure so what you're saying is it's more of a long term and not a quick fix solution that companies have got and yeah. probably they will go to back to the it's not only long term people now that they have crossed the hump you know they will go all out for it they will not have any inhibitions sure thank you so much saurabh um manvi i'll come to you and then i'll top it up to a question for rohit help us understand now from an hr perspective is there a change in the skill set that you are looking at is there a change in the temperament that you're looking at has the talent evolved for you I think now uh, the answer to that is uh, going to be a pure Manvi we have lost you are you there Till the time audience Manvi comes back I think I'll route the question to Rohit Rohit now a lot of sales people will be asking if my sales is not happening then what is the kpi or the performance metric that you are gauging me on what's your take what skill sets are you looking at from your people what performance metrics are you making sure that they abide to question is how much is the business available and what you got right uh, yes. how much is the information which is inside your brain and not documented yeah lot of times even in crm every company has a crm but lot of information is either in a diary or in a this thing right so just to mm-hmm. give you a classical case right uh, when 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 we started analyzing our last 3 months data which are the sites which we lost right multiple times the answer comes is a pricing right but when you start mm-hmm. doing a deep dive you realize the answer is not and and you start building capability on that Right. Sure. So next time, if it, it's the gauge is saying that out of the five sites earlier when you used to go, you used to win site one. Now, are you winning five sites out of twenty? Is your winning ratio going up? Right, because the kind of skill sets and the kind of information, right, on which you worked during this lockdown. So this is how the KPI will will evolve over a period of time. right second thing which is to do with the understanding what will going to sell in my market you are the person who is closest to the market you should be able to tell the organization please manufacture this this is one thing which i will require at this place on this time so that will be one thing which is which will be making entire chain efficient yeah so that will basically will so that will be a new kpi because concept of minimization of resources right in delivering uh, the future outcome uh, will be the key correct so that will be a a a, a key so s- simply the productivity of per person what kind of a job and the way saurabh eluded uh, digitization digitization helps in in making the information available readily right and correcting it at right point in time so when you have the, those kind of an information what are the corrective action and hence finally what is your winning ratio right so that is what 
will decide and the kind of resources which you use to deliver that so sure, sure, so sure. makes sense yeah typically a kpi uh, will uh, evolve over a period of time sure i think uh, with this rohit we have answered sachin's amarjeet's questions which are more related to performance management manvi since you have come back live um, taking the question back to you with business you decide what is the skill set you are going to ask from your employees what is the groundwork that or the ground rules you have laid for for performance evaluation Okay, yeah, thank you, and thanks for waiting um, uh, for the temporary disruption with my electricity. Uh, I think a uh, very interesting question on skills parallel. Like I was sharing, it's going to be more of a crystal gazing conversation based on the trends that we see in the short term. And an interesting question for you, I'm sure you being in the hiring industry, and uh, and what I see the trend of the skill demand supply. getting very focused from non routine to complex and innovative with companies now thinking about uh, you know using more automation to sort of manage the more administrative and routine tasks i think never before has this case been so high in terms of a business right i think with uh, the temporary um, non availability of labor and we seeing them sort of coming back we as an industry are actually realizing the importance of automation and being ready with the backup and uh, and making sure that the skill level that we use uh, is for you know more complex and innovative tasks uh, with with uh, you know i think having said that there is has to be a delicate balance between expertise and experiences and we have to maintain that and while i think the especially this industry with infrastructure uh, and construction we've had more uh, you know for some roles very expertise focused hiring and for others purely experience focused hiring i think that fine balance will now set in between both right and hence to my earlier comment of having gig workers because then you can be more flexible with your skill requirements right so what i would urge a uh, talent to do is have a backup skill right and i think get multifaceted uh, go beyond your functional areas explore this more than ever because companies are going to look at their headcount with a hawk's eye now more than ever and if they can find talent with those multi skills also with that agility of learning and uh, you know making sure that their farming efforts a uh, sort of translate into uh you know ready made talent and leaders for tomorrow those high potentials and that talent would you know suddenly start seeing itself very much high in demand and we've seen that in the short period already uh i think resilience is another skill uh, or a leadership competence that i find extremely relevant to point out uh, uh you know there would be times where you would have to handle a business remotely even as we proceed into the new normal there would be times where the logistic talents would get quite frustrating and there would be times when uh you know with our best intent there would be pressures of demand and we finding it difficult to deliver it and having to be more innovative in doing that so that resilience in leaders and teams and managers becomes critical more than ever today and uh, i think a performance management hence would see all these aspects coming in aspects. you know one of course so the skills that you have yes so what you're saying is softer as well as technical skills someone who is able to fine tune his soft skills and upskill on the technical aspect sanjay um, yes. over to you to understand what the other business leaders have said what's your take with all the rejig of different levers functions that we are having reassessment evaluation of employees where are we heading the building material construction and infrastructure industry short term mid term and long term view what's your thought i think sanjay you are on mute yeah now i am audible yes so now i think with so many uncontrollable factors you know i think we have to undergo a take a change in pms how do we 
you know and again short term and long term maybe after uh, this phase is out maybe we come back to the original one you know what regular pms we do which is more statical you know based on data and most on uh, system generated lot of companies they run their pms tools on the system only i think it is time that some bit of human aspect some bit of subjectivity has to come in and we had to i think we have to see that ki what is the compassion of the people what kind of tenacity they have got besides that we have to maybe evaluate them on engagement on uh, how is what kind of execution the team is doing and maybe what is their adaptiveness adaptiveness so basis these i think uh, we need to chalk out i think that's uh, maybe manvi uh, uh, kind of people have to uh, work on that and then uh, you know then come out with some kind of solution because your question was right with rohit that today a sales guy will say ki okay already two months gone so what, what about my q1 kpi what about my pli how i'm going to get paid and that's a question i think some people are asking smart ones and smart, some people are just shying away asking but then the question is in everybody mind and not only at the front line but even up to you know because uh, you know at the senior most levels also i think that's where we need to find out ways how do we you know uh, kind of evaluate people on different parameters and i think once we are part, through with this period and then i'm sure that there are other uh, these things will somewhere will get built in into our you know when we come out of this and we again go back to the normal stream i think these things will get built it up and then maybe if need be we have to use some tools subjectivity we have to remove maybe we have to use new promoter system or ban in company or something like there are various tools available but then i think we have to look into this and go in for a rejig in the pms perfect thank you so much sanjay for closing it uh, with with a very very positive and a strong note of being optimistic i will loop in uh, gobel who is the associate director for the good gaon of the set page and so that we have <clears throat> that our business leaders will answer over to you gobel thank you so much parul and uh, thank you uh, all the panelists so far you know for having such an engaging and an insightful session um uh, in the interest of time i will ask some questions you know which are directed to uh, you leaders specifically so sanjay in fact um, uh, it's interesting that you know a lot of people have asked you this question uh, and i'll i'll like to say on behalf of a couple of them uh, they're asking many people are worried about the collections or the payments coming in this time do you think there's will deep pockets have an advance uh, advantage of providing credit and winning more business over the relatively smaller players yeah sure i think that's what uh, that will happen but then it's not that ki i'm not worried about the cash flows even uh, you know i have also to rather i'll give uh, you know example like earlier i never used to you know uh, maybe interact once in a week with cfo now every day i have to interact because what i collect and then only he says this much only i'll not give you you know i get every day account you know i collected 10 rupees i get 9 rupees 90 paisa only or 9 rupees so i think it's not i think but yes certainly the companies like uh, you know hsi have also or any other maybe icci uh, all these companies will have uh, much stronger with deep pockets they will have an advantage but i think the we are maintaining and we are further you know rather we are uh, focusing on increasing the focus day by day on collections because it's important and we everybody will have a limit so beyond that limit nobody will be able to however good you are so i think collection will be a, a very very important and critical but yes on the one side other side yes the people with deep pockets will sustain little more much for that reason fair enough thank you so much for that um, i think manvi um, has mentioned that she would like to answer this to so manvi i'll straight away jump to you uh, this is a question coming from amarjeet Uh, what he says is, uh, what should be the working strategy for the sales support function, given that they are a part of the primarily the specifications team. Now, most of these people would otherwise be physically in front of a uh, you know partner or a client, and going forward, how will their strategy change? Yeah, I actually kind of like that question, and I wanted to just like it, but I think instead I. Uh, I said you know something different and uh, but I'm happy to answer it uh, I come from Asa Obloy which is a heavily specification driven industry and we had uh, various competitors with whom I've networked with because of the candidates I've interviewed thanks to people like 
my group page and uh, what happened really was that during this time i had so many of the spec people and the sales people sending out really innovative stuff out to the customers and keeping me in the loop uh, uh, probably because one would always like to keep relationships with hr and some of those videos had a uh, very interesting taglines like aap humko bhule to nahi and i think it was half lay and these were videos sent out to customers and then customers with the sales team are doing a medley together of a poetry they had written dedicated to their uh, end customers and i saw so many other innovative uh, stuff happening across the spectrum including our own people who made playbooks etc for our end customers to help them start their businesses and i think that there is no dearth of innovative ideas if you want your customer to uh, stay loyal to you across them i think uh, you know try and start up your business as soon as possible be available to them even if it is virtually find innovative ways to be connected and of course try and address their biggest pain point right and this is what we went after so if their biggest pain point today is how to start up their business give them all the resources that you have used to do the same because if your value chain succeeds you succeed so uh, that's probably my answer but we have a lot of people on the panel to help uh the gentleman with his answer yeah i think i think um, i'd like to point the same question then to uh, also get you know more of the business aspect like what manvi rightly mentioned uh, was the more innovative aspect of what people are doing so maybe um, such an if you could throw some more light uh, sorry rohit if you could throw some more light on this one yep uh, so basically first thing which i i would be saying in a changing scenario is a following up of a safety protocols yeah no matter what you do and one thing goes wrong entire thing goes for a closed down so before any any upskilling anything uh, right uh, is this following a safety protocol second thing is understanding uh, is uh, clearly uh, what all activity which requires a touch what all activity which doesn't require segregation of those things third is i i, I should be saying you know uh, a resilience or an agile environment which is basically uh, taking things ball by ball in cricket which we say right not planning too distant yeah because things are going to change every fortnight and and uh, i would say let's play ball by ball rather than planning to uh, this thing yeah there has to be a filter saying that yeah we're doing this are you going uh, to achieve your uh, long term goal or not right uh, but that's very very critical in in understanding and and answering these challenges fair enough thank you so much for that uh, rohit and manvi uh, you sort of uh, i think i i see a lot of people asking a question more for the feet on street or the people at the front line and they're saying that you know how is it that we are managing uh, the expectations of those people uh, given that you know some of you also spoke about the fact that they may end up not making their plis or the variable components of their salary which of course is a sizable component when you look at uh, you know their base salaries so uh, you know how is it that you guys are already managing those uh, communications and expectations for people uh, right at the front line so look uh, i don't know uh, we as a company are very effort focused you know uh, even for a very long time and uh, some of the you know old people would remember that we did not have uh, even an hr uh, person with us for a very very long time because our credo and our belief was that every person is an hr person we did not have a sales incentive program for a very very long time because you know we felt and believe that the people work for the higher cause uh, in the, in that sense of the term i think uh, havels has always been a very effort oriented uh, company so for us effort is much much more important and how it translates into output look output can be a result of a let's say a bumper order or something which you know you would been working on and then you know it came in also in a building and a construction industry please remember that individual efforts 
do not matter as much as team effort. because you know if a fan is going then if a geezer is going and a building material buyer is going so it's a lot of combined effort right so in a way we were always effort focused and not so much in terms of you know okay you brought in a 5 crore business and hence you get a cut of that etc etc we were never focused on that having said that let me reemphasize saying that end results and output is important what is becoming more and and i just saw a question flash uh, on the screen as well what is becoming more and more important is that people start working down from the green zones to the orange zones and go up to the red zones if your effort is completely visible in a green zone where you are you know kind of open to operate and stuff that's good enough for me in the market that you have if if a red zone is completely closed if chennai today is completely closed i cannot you know force the chennai guy and say that with the same yardstick which i would let's say a bijnor guy who would have you know kind of an open market or a green zone uh, working for so leaders amongst us will have to realize that there are different yardsticks people as long as they are putting effort and for the guys who are in the red zones means that they don't have uh, nothing to do no you still have to upskill you still have to do a lot of effort in terms of training in terms of establishing and keeping your contacts alive so when things start you know kind of uh, turning northwards you are there with him to get the orders so i think effort will be you know kind of and and people like manvi and all it's a challenge for them to you know kind of quantify that into a kpi and then put forward to the people perfect thank you so much uh, sir for that uh sanjay i have another one for you uh, uh, jitendra asks you that uh, you know what are the key things to take care of in this time in the organization especially with respect to the profitability you know whether you would prefer to take more of the market share or uh, you would look at more from a top line point of view see uh, we are you know manufacturing industry and certainly we have certain install capacities you know so where you know if we don't run the plants on full scale then obviously the costs go up so it is you know two way that yes we have to ensure that that you know uh, profitability is kept in mind and along with that we have to ensure that uh, we also work for market share because if you don't work for market share then obviously getting volumes you know, uh, won't uh, work and volume and value are very well correlated because you know especially in our industry whether we talk about sanitary wear or we talk about the faucets i think that's one and another thing is i think made the main thing will be how do we stabilize and restore supply chain and manufacturing that's number one second i think maintaining uh, and uh, you know kind of uh, excelling customer trust at this juncture will be very very critical and then uh, managing cost and cash liquidity i think that's no brainer at this juncture everybody has to look for, for that and then uh, that's very very important and that's how we move forward sure so sure. both i think there has to be balance between market share as well as you know on the other side you have to see the manufacturing side also sure thank you uh sorab in the interest of again time i'll i'll take one last one directed to you uh so there's a gentleman by the name of uh, abhishek who says that in the past 10 days uh, you know he's seen an increase in the price and delay in supplies so he is associated with the e-commerce company which supplies building and construction material to clients like yourself uh where do you see uh, you know this trend to decline as the cash flow is already so restricted in the industry well it becomes very difficult to answer such you know in default of very limited information but let me answer in generic terms okay uh, e-commerce is an area which we already you know participate in we already are there what is going to change so e-commerce happens in different way for the benefit of all the panels there is a marketplace there is a e-store of each you know uh, you know company what we are saying is that we are adding another element to it which is called e store order booking with delivery through an offline channel so this is the kind of combination which we which i explained earlier called online to an offline uh, kind of a model 
about the pricing going up or the supply chain not handling is supply chain not uh, happening is a complete consequence right now if he is judging it based on you know the last few days it's a complete consequence of which are the red zones orange zones red zone uh, or green zones whether you get permission to supply or not and again the e-commerce companies uh, have their you know very stringent time slots you know suppliers have to reach within those time slots in order to get their material in so there are whole lots of you know uh, combinations so i won't be able to answer him specifically in default of information i mean please share my id with him and uh, you know he, he's more than welcome to get uh, he'll get the right answer from us perfect perfect thank you so much uh, sir for that uh, lastly now since we are exactly on time uh, i'd like to hand it back to parul uh to do a little bit of a thank you note to everyone and a quick closing parul you move yes <laughs> thank you so much panelists i think we have been able to take a lot of questions from ashutosh saman um, whom saurabh answered for oran to red zone galaxy a15 and a lot of questions still answered but due to the paucity of time i think we'll have to uh close here and probably take it up individually and flag it off to you guys uh at a later point of time i will like to thank all of my audience it has been a fantastic and scintillating discussion that we had thank you so much for being so so engaging a big shout out to all our panelists and their teams who have been thoroughly involved and interested in the entire discussion um page management and of course my colleagues at page across gurgaon mumbai and bangalore office thank you so much guys unless it was you it would not have been possible though i can't say it's tgif uh, but thank god it's a thursday have a great evening ahead and stay safe with your families take care right thank you Thank you really appreciate it. thanks yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you good job parul